place to grow for uh, Monday. It's uh, September 4th. I just think it's a friendly community and if you are willing to put out a little effort I think everyone makes you feel welcome and you are just a part of it and once you become a part of something why this is how it prospers and grows. <laughs> Mr. Rice, you started business in 1937. Uh, September, store was September 17, 1937, we opened the Spurgeon store here in Perry. The one right across the street uh, now. The building is right across the street now, which is the building is now the House of Calhoun. Our new store is a block up from here. I see. You retired now? I'm retired. I've been uh, retired since uh, 1974. You've seen, uh, if you started in 37, then you've seen some, some hard years, you've seen some war years, you've seen an awful lot of changes in this community. Yes, I was in the Marines during the World War II. Mm -hmm. What changes have you seen uh, that have, uh, you know, occurred in, in the community of Perry? Well, in, uh, in those days, well, it was great for the railroads. And, of course, the railroads of uh, one out one by one, or you might say they took the trains off one by one. And uh, we had lots of trains coming in here. We had uh, in Minneapolis and St. Paul, and we had the Milwaukee, and we used to have an interurban here. I used to ride that to Des Moines once in a while. Well, uh, how, has, uh, how has Perry stayed the same then? It's, it's grown. It isn't losing the population. The people are still here. What, it, what do you attribute that fact to? Well, it's a very good town to live in. Uh, we got a variety of stores here. We always have had, and uh, grocery prices are very good, you might say. And uh, it's just been a great town to live in and raise a family. Why did you pick Perry to stay here? I mean, you know, why did you, you know, select this community? Well, uh, I've always liked Perry. It's, I think it's, uh, it's a good town. Uh, it's close to Des Moines. We have all the facilities of the large city. We're close to Des Moines. Uh, and uh, Mr. Black was the president of the Perry State Bank that time, and he asked me to join him in the bank, and I decided to take up that vocation. Bank's a brand new building, it looks like, or is it, I guess, remodeled. Yeah. It looks very, yes. very futuristic. Uh, yes, we've uh, made a tremendous capital expenditure in Perry. Uh, we moved in the latter part of uh, November, had our open house on December 1st, 2nd, 3rd. And uh, we believe in Perry. That's the reason we made this big expenditure, capital expenditure in Perry. Being a leader in the financial community, um, uh, where does uh, industry play a part in Perry? Well, we have two large, uh, I'd say three 
large industries in Perry. Of course, Oscar Meyer being the largest, uh, they employ somewhere approximately between seven to eight hundred people. Uh, Weiss Corporation is a very successful corporation. Osmondson's uh, built a new building out west of Perry. Uh, I think those are the three largest industries in Perry. Perry when when did you start this business? Uh, uh, well, I uh, w I think I'm probably the only. Uh, the man left in Perry that can say that I'm the last living blacksmith, actual blacksmith. I did work with my father in the blacksmith shop. I, I worked on the forge, and I was never a very good horseshoer, but I did shoe horses, and we'd done wagon wheel work and all that stuff, cabinet mm -hmm. work. But um, I started this business. I came home and during the Depression in 1936. Mm -hmm. My father and I was uh, in business uh, about eight years, and. Uh, uh, <clears throat> father was a little older and he didn't like manufacturing and I wanted to manufacture and he wanted to stay in the blacksmith shop. So <laughs> uh, uh, I um, started to, uh, formed a corporation with my wife uh, and I who are still the leading mm -hmm. the stockholders. It's a family. When was that? In 1942. 1942. Nin December 1st on each of them. We started the partnership on December 1st and I bought my father out and then, then uh, he uh, died in 52 but he was not affiliated with the corporation. You've lived here all your life then? Uh, all but about seven years that I was in Des Moines uh, with a power company. You, you've seen some fantastic changes in this community then. Yes, um, very, very much, and uh, I might say for, for the good, and, and, and very, uh, you know, for, I think we have a nice clean little town for the size of the town, and um, the growth has been very good for the, being so close to Des Moines. And uh, I, I think that uh, uh, right now they're fixing up a lot of the old houses are being fixed up because of property and such as that. And I, uh, I've seen a lot of changes in Perry. What are some of the major changes? <clears throat> well, uh, I think probably the major changes would be that uh, Perry was always a railroad town and it relied completely on the railroad. And uh, now Perry is really a, a f uh, the farm community and then the industry that Perry has now. How, how did the community of Perry make that transition from a railroad town into an industrial town? Well, I think it come quite natural. Probably the good Lord done more of it than anything else. And uh, uh, But uh, it, it came quite natural that uh, we just, uh, uh, our plants grew, uh, the industrial, and uh, some came in and uh, it uh, just came over. How many other industries are here? Well, it'd be uh, one, two, three, four. I'd say there was about five or six more. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. How does the community of Perry uh, incorporate the rural community? I mean, how do they work together? Oh, I think they work great. I think they work great because uh, uh, in Rotary and all the, uh, the affiliations of the, uh, um, like the Elks Club and such as that, uh, uh, you'll find farmers, uh, uh, the last exalted ruler that I remember, the Elks was a farmer, and uh, uh, the community works as a uh, really very, very, 100%, I'd say.
On the outskirts of Perry is located the Dallas County Forest Park and Museum. The museum originated through the efforts of a single individual, Mr. Eugene Hasty, who planted the trees, collected the antiquities, and provided the original buildings. The Dallas County Conservation Board purchased the area in 1966 and made it a public museum and arboretum. The museum presents the continuing history of Dallas County. The forest is a collection of trees from all parts of the country. We talked with Yvonne Street, curator of the museum. How does the community of Perry uh, help with the upkeep of this museum? Well, we have uh, different organizations such as Scouts and that, which will come out after a, a windstorm, pick up branches. We have the women's club here in town, and this is a annual project. They come out, they help plant the flowers, they do painting, the maintenance uh, out here, the original planning at the entrance. This was all done by the Webster Garden Club as well as Perry East. Mm -hmm. Now this, this museum is run by Dallas County, but why the interest on the part of uh, people that live in Perry to come out and, and help maintain it? Well, it's located just about a half mile south of Perry here, and then uh, we have beautiful trees out here, about 150, 60 different kinds that are all labeled. And then uh, also we have the picnic grounds here, and many people uh, will come out here with their families and picnic because uh, we are so close to Perry, and a lot of times Pate Park, you know, is full. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, I feel, as well as tourists going through and then people shopping in our community, why more or less they come from one place to the other. And then we've got a real cooperative chamber. Jim Wallstrom here sends them out, and we send them to town. So. So the people in Perry kind of claim this is their own, right? Yes. Okay. Um, how long have you lived in this area? Uh, we have lived here in the area 15 years. 15 years. What, what kind of community is Perry? Is it, a, is it a good place to grow and live? I think it is, and in the time that we've been here, we find that it is a very friendly community. And in the last two years, we see it uh, growing quite a bit. As the consumer in the family, all women are consumers in the family, you know, they, what... Uh, what are the shopping uh, capabilities of, of uh, Perry? Oh, gee, we have a terrific uh, variety of different stores as far as our clothing stores and hardware stores and um, our grocery stores. They're all very competitive to the city, so I feel most people can spend what money they have right here locally in the community. Is it a good place to raise a family? Yes, yes. We, uh, Our children now are all through school, but I feel... It's got a very good school system, and this is beneficial to the school. And I might add also we've had great support from the school here because in our various displays, the artwork was done by local high school students. If, if you were talking to a group of people that didn't know anything at all about Perry, Iowa, what would you tell them, and how would you tell them that Perry is a good place to live and grow? Oh, gee, I just think it's a friendly community, and if you are willing to put out a little effort, I think everyone makes you feel welcome, and you are just a part of it, and once you become a part of something, why, this is how it prospers and grows. Mr. Harmon, uh, you've lived in Perry since 1962. Uh, you didn't come to Perry in 62 to set up this hospital. You came for another reason. What was that reason? I came to Perry in 1962 to help organize what was known at that time Iowa Port Company. I was in charge of the uh, livestock procurement at that time. Why did you come here? I mean, was there a, uh, the community wanted to grow? Or what was the reason? Well, it looked to me like they wanted to grow. In one year, they were able to raise a million dollars and uh, were able to build Iowa Port Company. And since the com community was behind this project, it looked like an ideal place to grow with the community. Um, the, the hospital here is uh, a facility of how many beds? We have 45 now, and we're adding eight to 10 more beds for this unit. Is there a surgical staff? Yes, there is. How many doctors serve at this hospital? We have uh, six doctors servicing the hospital at the present time. And how many counties are, this is the Dallas County Hospital, county hospital. how many counties uh, uh, use the services of this particular facility? Well, there's actually two more. Uh, we have Greene County, and also just to the north is Boone County. And that's basically the area we serve. We think there are about 20,000 people that are served by this area. What makes this hospital unique? Uh, do, does it have special services that it can uh, render its, the patients in this area? Yes, we have a coronary care unit that can take care of the patients that 
need that service. We also have uh, all the other immediate uh, needs for people that uh, would require the needs of this hospital. And of course, uh, we know that unless the hospital is updated, the uh, unit will not be able to, to survive. And that's the reason why we are adding on to the hospital at the present time. I see. What kind of an addition are you putting on the hospital? Well, we are spending three and a half million dollars on the addition, which will uh, improve our situation very much. Uh, is it going to add beds or add special services? It's mostly adding more services to the hospital. We have to update our services and it'll add uh, a power unit, which we have to add to this unit in order to expand. With the hospital located in Perry, uh, are there candy stripers, or volunteer groups, uh, women's clubs that come in and uh, help the, with some of the administration of this? Yes, there is. The hospital auxiliary is very active in this hospital and does a lot to help us. Are there any uh, facilities here to take care of the elderly? Uh, no, not as such. We have uh, three uh, what we call uh, retirement homes, but we don't have the facility uh, that I think you're referring to to take care of the retired as such. The Lutheran Home, Masonic, and Spring Valley Manor, so they, they do a lot to take care of the elderly. Do you have any idea how many people they, they can take care of those three homes? No, I wouldn't want to give you the, the exact amount because I'm not, not familiar with that number, but I would say 200 or more. You are also a, uh, connected with some of the financial dealings in town. What is the financial status of, of, of Perry, and is it, a good, is it a good place for, say, new industry or new business to locate? I would say it was. Uh, first of all, we have a strong agriculture base. That's the reason why our packing company has been s successful. We have two strong banks, and uh, I am with this, the uh, Home Federal Savings and Loan, and uh, we have been growing and are building a new building this year. We need to expand our facilities. Uh, how would you summarize Perry? Is, is it a good place to grow? I would say that that would be my final statement, that Perry is a, a good place to grow because the people want to grow. The people want to grow. That's right. What do you attribute that attitude towards? Well, I think it's um, success. Once you have some success, you continue to try in that direction to be more successful. Why did you choose Perry? Why did you choose Perry to, uh, as a place for your employment? You're managing this drugstore, but why Perry? Well, I came down here uh, well in May and took a look around the town, and I liked the way the town looked. It was real clean. Jim Wallstrom, uh, the head of the Chamber of Commerce here in Perry, took me around town and he showed me uh, oh, all the places that you could go to to have fun. They have a real nice park here that you don't see in a lot of towns. He showed me the plans they have you know, for expanding Perry, and, an all-around positive, enthusiastic attitude towards Perry and growth. Uh, where did you come from? What kind of comparisons can you make with the other places that you've been? Okay. Well, I lived uh, in Keokuk, Iowa, which is a town of about 15,000 in southeast Iowa. And uh, Perry to Keokuk, uh, you get more of a togetherness, unity type of attitude here in Perry than you did in Keokuk. I lived in Omaha for about a year. and. Uh, I, get, I like the small town atmosphere. You get to know people, you walk down the street, they say hi to you. If uh, you need help, you know who you can turn to, that kind of thing. What kind of cooperation do you get from, uh, you know, the established businessmen here? They, you know, when they come in with a new, uh, new company like yours, uh, uh, do they put that hand out and say, hey, we're going to help you? Yeah, they do. They really do. I've met the people here that, well, like the bankers here, come right across the street and introduce themselves. They come in, they drop by. See if they can help you, we'll help you. The clothing store people, the other two pharmacies here in town, they try to help where they can. Is that, is that, is that because they have a sense of, look, we, we want to make this place go. We want to make it a, a nice place to live. Uh, if we help this new business, uh, they may help us in the future? I think so. Uh, I think that we can draw a lot more people here to
to Perry, we can help the other business. People will come from the surrounding area that may not have come here before. They may have gone to Des Moines. They'll come here now. Maybe you know, they'll go to some of the other stores too, and everybody will be you know, helped out. If you had the money and you were going to set up a, a business, uh, would Perry be a, a community that you would look for? Yeah, it really is. So I you, you, you draw so many people from the surrounding area, you know, and, and the, I don't know, just the whole, the whole town, you'd have to be here for a while to really see, but the people want to make the town go. I mean, they really want to keep, you know, traffic here, they want to keep people happy. I know the whole, the whole thing is just in a positive, you know, one direction, that's up. In the three months you've been here, uh, you know, uh, have you noticed any, any policy of facelifting? As I sit here in front of the uh, Perry State Bank, brand new modern building. I look across the street and I see a building called Fashion something or other. Yeah, fashion three. Brand, yes, uh, fantastic new, uh, you know, facades, uh, new architecture. Is this an ongoing process here in Perry? Yeah. Uh, Jim Wallstrom tells us that we're going to put in a few more murals around here. We're going to try to make Perry more attractive, you know, so people when they come into town will, will remember it. You know, as businesses want to come in, I think they'll find a lot of cooperation you know, from everyone. Uh, as far as housing goes, I think that they're expanding their houses. A lot of new complexes are going up. A lot of new houses are going to be put in. I think, uh, I don't know, there's just not really too much more you can say. You know, that the people are good. You know, the housing is here. The educational system, I'm told, is really fine. Uh, athletic department could use some more guys to help build their football and basketball teams, but I think they're coming around too. How long you lived here in Perry? Oh, uh, since 74. Is Perry a good place to live and grow? Yeah, it's great. I see you're all decked out for tennis. You got tennis courts here to play on. Yeah, it's it's fun. Well, uh, how come you're not the over here watching the girls at the swimming pool? <laughs> huh? It's all right. It's, it's a good place to grow, though. Yeah. It's... Right. What's your name? Kevin Nur. Kevin? Yeah. Is Perry a good place to grow? You bet. Is Perry a good place to live? You bet. Is this your hometown? Yeah. Is it a good place to grow? Yeah. How long have you lived in, in Perry? Two and a half years. Is it a good place to grow? Yeah, it is. It's a very good place. <laughs> What are some of the good things about this community? I've, I've been here, you know, two or three times now, and, and uh, the people are really high on, on Perry, and I want to know why. Well, this is only a half hour show, I believe. Yeah. Uh, but we will cover some of the high points or some of the things that we're proud of. First of all, I think right now that we're most proud of our people and uh, the attitude of the people. I think you're well aware that ours was one of the very few bond issues that's been passed since the so-called Proposition 13. But I think our people realize that uh, nothing in life is really free and uh, the tax base must be there and you must pay for these uh, upgrading facilities. The building we're standing in front of is an old Safeway right. uh, grocery store. It was uh, purchased by the city and it is going to be used for what purpose? Well, all our, it'll be a city complex and all the facilities will be in there, the police, the fire, and of course our offices as well as the city, uh, the council chambers and this kind of thing. Uh, we felt that this was an excellent buy and an excellent opportunity. Uh, this building was purchased uh, without using tax funds. There was no tax money. And as you can see, we have adequate parking and we also have room for expansion on it. Uh, we're going to build a, a no frills type of structure, but at the same time, it's going to serve our purposes and needs. Uh, how, is, how is Perry growing? Well, uh, as far as population, we're not making that big a strides in population as such, but uh, we have need of uh, more R1 housing uh, and this type of thing. We're adequate on our hospital. We have excellent hospital facilities. Our school system is one of the best. Uh, population, we really haven't become the so-called bedroom town, but we've been put in uh, two new shopping centers. We have some excellent uh, low-cost housing for low-income, handicapped people. Uh, our, the other facilities that you need, the sewage disposal and this type of thing, are more than adequate, and we could, uh, we could service 10,000 people. We're at 7,000 now. Mm -hmm. What about the, the water treatment uh, plant that, that Oscar Mayer uh, helped 
fund or whatever that you know they spent some money to so they could bring their business here how what's the story behind that uh, we love Oscar Meyer and uh, they're certainly a good neighbor their facility out there to treat uh, their uh, water the so-called wastewater the runoff uh, it did have an odor for a while and of course around here it was a standing joke that it certainly smelled like money to most of us but that facility out there was when it originally planned was a million two and as Oscar has put it in now and uh, they remove the odor the smell and any chance of pollution uh, it's over a three million dollar facility and uh, it's really serving the purpose now what about paving and uh, fire protection and police protection uh, how does the community of uh, Perry uh, get these services well of course they're levied locally in that but just recently we have went into a millage for the surrounding rural area and they're uh, trying to support the fire protection. We have excellent equipment, we really do. Our police, uh, we have a young force, uh, all but one now have been through the academy, they're fully qualified, and they, they do a, a great job. We've said often that uh, we have the 24-hour, of course, uh, communication system. We're on the 911, which is a, a big improvement, and many communities our size have not been able to do this. 911, of course, is an emergency number. Uh, old people, young people are, are in between, I suppose. At times of a real emergency, if they can dial 911, they're going to get any of the services that are required. That's all they have to do. Even if they hang up the phone or drop it, we can trace it. Is Perry a place for um, a, an older couple to retire? I would think so, because we have all the facilities that they need as far as uh, dental and medical and uh, this type of thing. We have uh, provided transportation uh, through a countywide system. Uh, we transport them uh, on shopping trips and wherever they need to go for whatever purpose. We certainly have uh, the fine shops here mm -hmm. uh, for any needs that they might have. We talk about the older people. What about the younger generation? What about recreation and education? One of the things that we're real proud of, and maybe we're not trying to stress this, but in a town of our size, we have 856 people involved in ball programs through the summer. This is Little League all the way through slow pitch. We have swimming pools, uh, tennis courts, uh, all the things that young people need and want, and they really do. So we think that we're providing uh, pretty good recreation facilities for them. Would you consider Perry a good place to grow? Definitely, definitely. I am, I am really pro Perry. I since I've been here, I've. Uh, I've lived in several towns this size and some bigger. Uh, this is a great place, it really is. Is Perry a good place to live? <laughs>